this uh, this land trust was excess Marta land, and it came about after Marta dug this ramp along the tracks and put a tunnel under the tracks, and then dug their ramp up to the other side. But when Marta was done with their project, they auctioned off this land, and a group of neighbors pulled their resources together, won in that auction, and began clearing the trash and the kudzu and ordering plants through the mail. And moving stones and building stages and saunas and fish ponds. Planting banana trees. We've got a little clump of bananas right here on this tree. Life in the city. The land that is the land trust was owned by MARTA, which is the Mass Transit Authority. And we realized it was going to be sold for houses. And at the time, the property was pretty affordable so we spent a couple of years organizing and uh, along with a few other neighbors and it actually took about five years I think total from when we started organizing to when we bought the land. Norm Amada, Norm of Maryland, uh, first brought my attention to this idea of a community buying surplus property up here. My parents got involved, my dad's the one who got involved for a while and he came a couple years after they started. We had just moved to the neighborhood when this was bought uh, and we're going through a big transition that wasn't involved with it here in the beginning but have been for a good while now. I can't say how long but I've been coming, coming since pretty early in the land trust era. The land trust was Take it was purchased approximately around 1986, I believe. 1986, 1988. I'm not on the exact date, but it's been almost 20 years. Put together by a bunch of like minded people. And Very light. It went from like a thought to reality and beyond. Not First of all, Charlie, one of the founders of the Land Trust, says that all the dogs and cats that live on the Land Trust are reincarnated Buddhist monks. And I like that, and that this is their reward. And I'm sure that it's, it feels very rewarding for the people that live here too, because there's a place for the children to get together and run around and feel safe. They're running together, they're playing together, they're enjoying themselves, they're kind of babysitting each other. The Land Trust is babysitting the children, it's great. And then there's a place for drum circles and guitar circles and, and fires and drink a beer or have some wine at night with the adults and all the adults congregate and meet and have a good time. So then there's more of a community mindset when anything happens around here like a land trust or somebody that had uh, uh, any kind of car troubles or house troubles or rarely there's ever a crime, everybody in the neighborhood is immediately aware and band together to help the person because they know them from the drum circles. Their kids play with their kids. They have they come to the, the potlucks that are frequent in some of the houses in the neighborhood. I live next door there and I lovingly refer to my gate as, you know, Alice in Wonderland's rabbit hole. This is a general map of the land trust itself. We're right here by this bulletin board. We just passed the solar well, the gardens, the sand pile, the gazebo, the stage, the fire pit, the city overlook, the water garden, and the sweat lodge or sauna. Next door Tree Climbers International have recreational tree climbing the first and third Sunday of every month. It's giving, using the land for the good of everybody. And even though I have a private business of recreational tree climbing, a school, um, it's green space, people can walk through, we have a big picnic table, and it's used by the community, so it's a really nice fit. Also, too, it's, it's you know, I'm a drummer myself. Uh, my old hippie name was Bongo, so um, you know, sometimes I go up in the drumming circle and I drum, so it's 
hey, it's, it's, it's great. It's fabulous. This is our drum circle and fire pit and stage area. The stage is named after one of our great neighbors, Mark Sanger, who passed on a couple of years ago this November. And it was inaugurated in his honor in October before he passed. This was his vision to have some performances and plays and acting and things of that nature. I come through, I come to the drum circles and every now and then they have events here that bands play. I've played here before with my band. And just a place to have fun and be in nature and get away from the city. Well, I always been a dancer and I always you know, enjoy meeting people and playing drums. So many years ago when I first moved here, uh, somebody happened to tell me about the drum circle. So I came over and I really, really fell in love with uh, this place because it's in the middle of the city and uh, it's just been in paradise. People participating in it, you know, the different um, events that go on. And the I mean, I just get so excited, like, going over there and, you know, being able to dance and really participate in that way. This has given us a green space in what had been an industrial waste. Marta had just left a, a devastated piece of land here. Uh, by getting in and working, the neighbors got to know each other. I think every, you know, I really think every neighborhood should have a land trust. It's a lot of work, though. It's building communities, not an easy thing. It's very rewarding, but it's not easy. The sweat lodge, I think, was the first structure we built. There's a community mural for the, uh, the fireproofing behind the stove. Numerous neighbors are going to do a panel. That tile mosaic. But these two panels are going to be tiled just so there's less of a fire risk. This actually burned down. And the foundation is the only thing that survived from the original. We had a garden shed up there for a while. Then I guess we built a gazebo. Here's our community gazebo. There's a community potluck here the 13th of every month when the weather cooperates. This pecan is the main tree that's original. Almost everything else has been planted. For the Olympics, we had camping out here and we did some fundraising. We built a compost toilet. It's a tool shed at the moment. Uh, it was used back in 96 when we had campers here during the Olympics. My kids, like, we used to go up there, like, to the sand before I came to Amara. I knew that place over there. My kids always loved it. And I think that's one of the reasons that I really like staying here is because my kids really enjoy being here and when you think about it this is a huge back I don't know how you say it like a back uh, backyard backyard yeah, a huge a backyard room. that that they claim as their own and they can do whatever they want and and we never have enough just walking around there and playing the early on when we we're starting the land trust one of the things we toyed with was mandating that the land trust be totally off the grid. But the realities of the money was such, I mean, it was hard enough just to buy the land and keep that going. So going off the grid might happen up there, but in the future. Well, we do have a solar pump for our there well. There is a solar water system up there. Yeah, so it yeah. pumps very uh, pure right. well water. Well, there's a solar panel that feeds or powers this pump there's a well that was dug 500 feet, mostly through granite, and at 180 feet they hit water. So on a sunny day you can come up here with a jug, turn that panel so it faces the sun and get water right out of the ground. Yeah, the water is very soft. Though. It's very soft, very alive. The water coming out of the pipe into the house yeah. is dead. Yeah. You know, and even when it runs through the filter and it takes out the chlorine and all of the bad tastes, it still doesn't have any life to it, but this water out of the earth like that, it's just like 